you know, I'm just out of here in my backyard just looking around and you know, all that stuff that's going on around us. When the sun comes out and it's shining in the spring, you kind of forget about everything. So, hey, if you have any questions that you'd like me to at least attempt to answer, um, just leave it in the comments of this video or any video for that matter, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thanks. Rubber City lost and found. Commonwealth Cabin is looking good. Question, do you pass eBay carrier discounted shipping rates to the buyers? Just realize there's a checkbox in the shipping preferences if you do not want to pass along that discount. Thanks. So just remember, the answer is no, I don't. And I could certainly see in some cases, I guess I could answer that question yes because of the way I do shipping. But on a calculated shipping item, the answer is no. And you know, remember, eBay charges you a fee, 10%, even on the shipping costs. So let's just do a hypothetical and say sh shipping on an item costs 10 bucks, And the eBay discount for shipping is going to be, uh, maybe it's like, let's say it's $9 is what you're going to pay. The buyer pays 10 you pay 9 Well, a 10% fee on that is going to take it down to 9 bucks. So really, there is no shipping discount going to you at all to be passed along because you're being charged a fee on top of it. So hopefully that makes sense, and uh, let me know. All right, this isn't a question, but I just had to get it on here. During these stay-at-home times, I have been playing Elf on the Shelf with Enaman, and my son is very confused why he keeps moving around. I told him it's because he's restless since he can't get out to go to garage sales. Jason, that's great. I love it. Maybe we should uh, package it up. Maybe I'll make a little book to go with it, and we'll put it in a little box, and we'll market it. But uh, by the time I got all that done, I think I'd be sold out. So anyway, thanks so much. Question from Pam Teeks. Kevin, I have just sold two items to eBayers with zero feedback. Do you think that's going to be a problem? I remember you talking about zero uh, eBayers. Do you think they are just trying to find something to do during these times where we stay at home? So... Yes, actually, this is it's going to be no problem is my guess. I mean, just like anything else, there's always a chance. And people with zero feedback probably have a little bit higher chance of something going wrong. But look, as eBayers, we're going to need to sell to uh, new people buying on eBay. A lot of people buy often on eBay, but they get a unique ID when they do. So uh, I, I wouldn't be worried at all. I'd be happy about the sales and ship them right off. This question is from Mike. He says, how do you get the cha-ching when you sell something? Well, first of all, you have to have the eBay app, and then you have to go to notifications and make sure that the sound button is on for your notifications. So I got to tell you, I had to ask my wife that because I keep them off most of the time because I have to teach class, and I can't have that thing going off during class. So Mike, hope that helps. Question from Ken. He says, great video. Question, can we use USPS regional rate boxes with pirate ship? So you're going to use dimensional shipping uh, basically only, you know, along with weight on pirate ship. So no, you're not going to be able to use the regional rate boxes. All right, I got a question here from, I guess, Brian, which is interesting. He says, are you single? So I brought Blue Ridge Mama in to answer this one. What do you think? Well, apparently he's asking about you, so... I guess he's into <laughs> men in their early to mid forties and that have a family. I don't know. Brian, if you want him, I can. I mean, see what I can do. But currently, no, he's not single. Question from Tina. She says, "Nice video," and that's the video we did with a new eBay reseller here, Patriot Picker. Consignment sounds good, except for as the actual seller, you take the hit on the taxes. So do you factor that into um, how you share with the owner? Just curious. So, uh, Tina, that is a great question. I do not. Now, I only count the profit that I make, So, and I'm paying taxes on my portion of the taxes. I'm not paying taxes on the person I'm consigning with. That's their responsibility. I write off the cost of goods being the amount of money that I give them, which is 50% of the profits, if that's the deal. So I'm paying taxes on my portion, and they're paying taxes, <laughs> I'm assuming they're paying taxes on their portion. Now, it, it is true that all that money is showing on my PayPal, 
and that on my PayPal, assuming that we're going to continue to use PayPal, is going to show all that money coming in. But that doesn't mean that I can't keep a record of how much I'm paying out to the person. So hopefully that helps uh, answer your question. Mike, I've had this question before. He says, just wondering how much did you pay for the Enemand per piece? So I hate to disappoint, but I'm not going to answer it. I'll answer it in two ways for now. And the reason I'm not going to answer it is because I'm going to make a video about the Enemand when we sell the last batch, about how much money we made, how much we paid, and all that. Uh, let's just say this. I'll answer it in two ways. The place that I bought these from, Dirt Road Treasures, they were selling them in their shop for two bucks a piece. They were selling them in the shop for two bucks a piece um, to buy them off one at a time. So definitely cheaper than two bucks. Let's just say that. The other little uh, sneak peek I'm going to give you is I could call that Commonwealth cabin, the actual shed itself and all the work that was done inside of it. I could call it the house that Enaman built and I'd be pretty accurate. So anyway, right, hopefully that suffices for now and we'll get that video done here when the last batch sells off. And at this point, it's looking like sometime this summer. So we'll see. Chris, this is a tough question and my answer is probably not going to suffice, but I'll give you a couple things to think about. On average, how long does it usually take to sell a product from listing to sale? I'm trying to stay patient, but wondering. So, I mean, it just totally matters. Every What type of item you're selling, how much you're selling it for. I mean, there are so many factors that go into it. What's the demand for a product? You know, what's the sell-through rate? Like, I just listed something this morning that's already sold. I listed two things last night that have already sold. And I have listings that have been on there for almost two years. My my oldest listing is like 614 days old or something like that. So other than the multiple quantity ones. So there are a lot of factors that go into it. It just depends on what you're selling. So I will just tell you this. If you keep listing items and you keep putting good prices on them, you're going to sell items. It's going to happen. So I wouldn't get too discouraged. I would just keep up at it and get it done. Here's a question from Vinny about that paper cutter that's in the Commonwealth cabin. He says, did you make it or did you build it? I, uh, or excuse me, did you buy it? I bought it. I have very little skills. I can't make much of anything, as you see in my comment there. I can make a little money on eBay, but that's about all I can make. So I definitely bought that thing. I love it. It's, it's, it's more, you know, it's not the most practical thing in the world. You could just put some kind of, you know, broomstick or something together and make it real cheap and figure out a way to, to just tear it. Probably be a lot cheaper. Um, I got that on a pretty good deal. I bought it off of eBay. And uh, I sent an offer to somebody and got it fairly cheap. Because it was, I think, from somebody here in Virginia. So I want to say I paid like 30 bucks for it. Got a great deal on it. I actually bought another one too. And I'm probably not going to use that one. I'm going to end up reselling it, I hate to say. Nancy, great question. Do I need ni license plates from Rhode Island? The answer is yes. I don't have one from Rhode Island yet. So I counted out. I think I'm going to have spaces for at least 37 different bins. Initially, I thought it was 30, but now it's 37. So I don't know what 13 states are going to be left out, but it doesn't sound like Rhode Island's going to be left out. I would appreciate that very much. It's very kind of you. Question from Michael. I have a question with no answer. How can a great family guy, a first-rate eBayer, and YouTuber get two dislikes on a vlog? That is a great question. You let me know, Michael, who you're talking about, and I'll go check it out, and I'll make sure I'll give him a thumbs up. Michael, I'm going to look at the last part of your question. It's not really a question, but it kind of is here. So there's so much I can't find out, like this crazy shipping costs and types. How do I tell eBay that I will ship in an envelope or a bag when they want dimensions? Um, so, look, first of all, let me just say there are a lot of videos out there. I have one. It may not answer all your questions, but if you start watching some shipping videos, I have one particular video that talks about flat rate. How do you decide how to do calculated flat rate or free shipping? And that gives you a lot of insight. And if you just start digesting little bits, it'll help you in the long run. I would say right now, you know, just do calculated shipping and... I think the problem here is you're thinking like if it's in an envelope, it should only have two dimensions instead of three. But I just put for, for eBay's purposes, you know, 10 by 8 by 1. Um, if I'm putting it in a poly bag or something like that. Um, and that gives you a pretty good idea. The dimensions really aren't that big of a deal when you're doing calculated shipping 
unless we're talking about a big box. You know, if we start getting into, you know, sides that are, you know, 14 inches long and a height that's that's probably uh, 8 or 9 inches, you know, 15 by 15 by 10, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to run into dimensional issues with. So then the size of the box does become important. But before you get to that point, if we're talking about 8 by 6 by 4 or something like that, it's not all that important. I don't even put the right dimensions in. The weight's a little bit more more important when we're talking uh, about smaller items. 